Hey everyone, welcome back to another dividend investing video and another dividend portfolio update. That's right, we're coming into a new month. That means it's time to review all of the account activity in the dividend growth income portfolio for January 2024. Now I'll show you the stocks I was buying and the dividend income we collected during the month, as well as show you where I see things going with this portfolio. We have a lot to cover. Let's get into it. I'm Nick, and this is the Dividend Growth Income Channel. Thank you for joining me today. I'm not a financial advisor or guru. I'm just a regular guy who wants to share my love of dividend growth investing and building financial independence with passive income. If you could, please do me a favor, smash the like button, and subscribe to keep up with future videos. This helps us out more than you can imagine with the algorithm so we can bring you more quality dividend investing content. So, this account is in Fidelity. I started it about a year three and three months ago, back in the earliest days of this channel. I created this account at the time with a goal in mind to one day pay me over $1,000 a month in dividends, and I plan to document this account's journey to that point here on the channel. So I call this the Dividend Growth Income Portfolio. Over the last 15, 16 months, I built this up to about over a $20,000 portfolio. It was actually at $21,000 when the day started, but as we had what feels like a rare red day, it went under that amount. So I did this by making weekly contributions. I did not miss a single week since I started. Dollar cost average is the name of the game. I buy every Wednesday and here shortly I'll show you what I was buying. I've been building out this spreadsheet portfolio tracker in Google Sheets, primarily as a way to present this information in video format to you guys. Today the fund stands at $20,869.31. And I've contributed $19,100 in funds. I have $19,427 invested. This is because the dividends we received over the last 15 months have been reinvested as well. Right now, the portfolio is up over 9% based on contributions. That's total gain between you know, dividends and unrealized price appreciation. I have some metrics here to track the yield. Right now, we're yielding 3.02%, but our yield on cost is 3.25%. That is the yield on what's actually been invested, or what you would call yield on deposit. So far, this portfolio has brought in almost $400 in dividends. And over the next 12 months, it's projected to pay $630.55. We can look at this as $52 a month, or $12 a week, or $1.00. 73 per day and I have below this forward income goals and I don't like to think of myself as chasing these because until these dividends are something you know, meaningful in other words I can use them to pay my bills and such it makes more sense to focus on the total growth picture this is not a yield chasing account or a yield chasing channel dividend growth is the name of the game but still it's nice to track these goals we recently passed this $50 a month goal and I think it's quite likely by the end of the year, we're going to be around this $100 a month goal, which will be a nice milestone to hit, but I'm not going to chase yield to get there. Okay, let's go to purchases made in the month of January. First, let's look at how I've been adding funds into the account. We'll scroll down to 2023. I was consistently adding on Wednesdays. I started the year by adding $250 per week. By the end of the year, I was adding $300 a week. And the idea is I'm getting more aggressive with contributions as time goes on at least until I get to that $100,000 mark, which even though we're like technically 20% of the way there, in reality, it's a little bit closer than that because of compounding. So keeping with stepping it up for 2024, I'm committed to adding at least $350 a week, at least as long as I'm able to. I guess things can go sideways, but right now this is the plan. There are five Wednesdays in the month of January, so we've added another $1,750 in contributions. We've set a goal of hitting $18,000 in contributions for 2024, $3,600 more than we did in 2023. And I started buying a new stock this month, that is MasterCard. Now, a lot of you might say, Nick, why are you adding a stock that pays less than 1% to a dividend portfolio? And I'd say this is a dividend growth portfolio. And after evaluating the portfolio at the end of the year, I decided at this stage it made sense to have a little bit more of the lower yielding high growth stocks more long-term play. And it does the dividend growth thing quite well. We have a five-year average annual dividend growth rate of 18%, more than a decade of dividend growth. And over the last 10 years, those who have held MasterCard have a 526% total return between dividends and price appreciation. Now, of course, past performance doesn't guarantee the future, but this has been a serious compounder, and I thought the portfolio needed more of this sort of thing. So as for what I purchased, on January 3rd, I purchased $100 in MasterCard. 
$100 of Home Depot, ticker HD, $100 of Mondelez International, ticker MDLZ, and $50 of VOO, this is the S&P 500 Index, ETF. Then on Wednesday, January 10th, I purchased $100 of MasterCard, $100 of SCHD, the Schwab U.S. Dividend Equity ETF, $100 of VYM, the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF, and $500 more of VOO. Okay, and then on Wednesday, January 17th, I added $100 of MasterCard, $100 of Aflac, ticker AFL, $100 of United Health ticker UNH, and $51 of Cisco Systems, ticker CSCO. Then on January 24th, I purchased $100 of MasterCard, $100 of Snap-on, ticker SNA, $50 of Home Depot, $50 of Main Street Capital, ticker MAIN, and $50 of Contractor, Lockheed Martin, ticker LMT. Finally, on Wednesday, January 31st, I purchased another $100 of MasterCard, seen the pattern there, $100 of Agri Realty, ticker ADC, $100 of McDonald's, ticker MCD, $50 of BlackRock, Inc., ticker BLK. And that's a lot of purchases for the month of January. I definitely got a lot of MasterCard. I'm not suggesting it's cheap at evaluation here. I was just trying to build a position. Uh, so I got $500 worth of that this month to, to start that. I think it's generally at fair value, actually. In stocks like this, I believe, you just buy and hold for the long haul, so I'm not overly worried about it. Okay, so let's look at the dividend income we collected. So we received nine dividend payments in total over the month of January. On the first of the year, we received the first payment of the year. It was from Automatic Data Processing, ticker ADP, in the amount of $2.80, and it was reinvested. I loved that company. On the second, we received $4.76 from Best Buy, ticker BBY, consumer electronics retailer, and it was reinvested, but a few days later, I decided I was going to be parting ways with that one, so this will be the last Best Buy dividend we receive. On the fourth, Vici Properties, one of my favorite real estate investment trusts, paid me $9.70. That was reinvested. On the twelfth, Mondelez International, ticker MDLZ, they paid me $2.71, reinvested. On the 16th, Triple Net Lease Retail REIT, Agri Realty paid me $2.82, and that was reinvested. They pay every month, which I freaking love. Also on the 16th, my other monthly payer, Main Street Capital, ticker MAIN, paid out $3.09, reinvested. On the 17th, Medtronic PLC, ticker MDT, it's a medical device maker. They paid out $4.38, and that was reinvested. Then I had two more dividend payments, both on January 24th. The first was Comcast, ticker CMCSA, in the amount of $4.11. Comcast just announced a nice raise. And then Cisco Systems, ticker CSCO, they paid me $4.18. Both of these were reinvested. All in all, we collected $35.84. All of it reinvested into more dividend stocks. Here is a look at all the holdings in the fund. I can sort this any way I like. Right now it's sorted by weight. I think this is the most useful way to view this. Heavily, heaviest weighted at the top, lowest at the bottom. You might notice my bottom three are in red. This is because I've determined that these are stocks that are now marked for sale. I am parting ways with them in the next few months. And I've turned drip off on all of these as of January 15th. They are tiny positions. I have less than $500 in each of them. And I put out a video a couple weeks back illustrating why I'm selling these. So I'm not going to reiterate all that, only to say I'm looking for investments that are going to do more than just pay out dividends, right? I'm looking for total growth and dividend growth. I think this is a better way to build it out, not focused on what it's paying today, but optimally what it'll be paying 10 years from today. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I also think the fund has a few more stocks than necessary, so cutting out these three is going to help reduce that you know, in that way. And if you want to know more about why I'm selling them, link in the description to that video from it was two weeks ago. And then looking at the top three holdings, these are ETFs. I want ETFs to be the largest holdings in the portfolio. Now for most of 2023, I had these targeted at about 25% of the weight, but I'm not gonna let it drop to about 20% because I'm focused almost entirely on ETFs in my Roth IRA. So SCHD and S&P 500, both over there. So I wanna focus more on individual stocks in this account while keeping a foundation of these ETFs in place. I will continue to add to them just a little bit less and more in the dividend growth stocks. Then we have 23 other individual stocks with the addition of MasterCard this month, not counting these ones I'm selling. Now, I will be bringing MasterCard up to the top here alongside my Chevron, McDonald's, Vici, Lockheed Martin, the core positions I see in this account. If we sort this by the gain column Z to A, we can see what has performed the best. Consistently, my strongest performer has been Broadcom Inc., ticker AVGO, the other day, it was up over 100%. Now it's about 94%. I just wish I had purchased more of it in those earlier days of this portfolio. Then we have Amgen here at nearly 30%. 
and Comcast at 18%. Most of the holdings here are green. The only one I'm down pretty heavy on here is Next Era Energy. It's the loan utility, and utilities have had a rough go in the last year, but overall I still feel pretty good about them and I'm not worried about it. I could potentially add some more to this one every month. We're also down on your Agri Realty, Chevron, Lockheed Martin. And these are stocks I've been buying to lower my cost basis, and I'll probably pick up more of those in February as well, even though they're amongst the top positions in the account. Okay, this page shows out all of the income this portfolio is projected to pay out as things stand today. Right now, that's $630.55. These are consistently growing, and this happens three ways. First, when we buy more dividend growth stocks every week. Second, when I receive the dividends and reinvest them. And third, when these companies all announce dividend hikes. I had two companies in the fund do this in January. That is Comcast with a 7% raise. BlackRock Inc. also came in with a disappointing 2% raise. Presently, my strongest months are March, June, September, and December. We're set to receive nearly $100 in March, for example. By the time that comes around, we should do over that amount. Then January, April, October are set to bring in about $40 a month. Then February, May, August, and November are going to bring in about $20 a month. This is going to go down probably by about half of that when I sell out of Kinder Morgan and AT&T. These months are just doomed to be low, I suppose. MasterCard does pay in that group. Right now, that comes out to less than $4. Now, when I make these three sales, my income is going to drop some, but that is okay with me long term. I think those are the right moves to make. So to sum up the activity of the portfolio, we started out the month $18,933 in the account. We added $1,750 in contributions and ended up with $20,869 for a gain of $186.22, just under 1%. We collected $35.84 in dividends this month. We, And as things stand, we are projected to receive over $630 over the next year as things stand. Of course, it's going to go down a little bit once I make those sales, but it's going to keep going up every week. So that's where it is. I'm excited for what 2024 is going to bring. There's lots of uncertainty. Dividend growth has definitely been underwhelming if January is anything to go by, but we'll see what happens. It's also an election year, which makes for an interesting market to say the least. Now, thank you for sticking around. Those of you who found our channel with this video and those of you who watched the first video in this series when we split $100 between SCHD, VYM, and VYO. All of you are my people. Much love. Have a wonderful, awesome dividend investing journey. And until next time, keep investing.